Hi everyone. Good evening. How are you guys? Okay, so we are again here with one more guideline. And today's guideline is one of the very interesting and you know, like the guidelines for the trending use of AI. We all have the use of AI in our life, in our healthcare system and all. So there are actually two guidelines, right? There are two guidelines, but we are covering one from ICMR for the conduct of good research, conduct of ethical research. Okay. There is one more guideline which talks about which talks about AI in healthcare. Let me show you one by one. Then I'll uh, you know come to the uh, presentation. Let me first show you these two guidelines. You must be differentiate, you know, because you must not be confused with those guidelines. Okay, you must not be confused with those guidelines. So let me just show you. Okay, let me show you. Yeah. Here, so let me share these one by one. This is the one guideline. I hope you can see it. Okay, this is the one guideline made by National Academy of Medical Sciences (NAMS) and Director General of Health Services (DGHS) and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Okay, and the title of these guidelines is. is Artificial Intelligence in Healthcare in India. Okay. Artificial Intelligence in Healthcare in India. So here they talk about, they talk about the AI use in healthcare. Okay. AI use in healthcare. Developed by NAMS, DGHS, uh, Government of India Task Force, serial number 007, right? So if we look at the content, if we just look at the content, so here content talks about the introduction, background, like uh, AI applications in medicine, AI applications in digital pathology, AI applications in challenges, challenges with AI and all. Then, uh, you know, uh, recommendations and then way forward about, you know, these things. And uh, then major terms, which have been given for AI and all, right? So this is like when you are using the AI in healthcare services. This is for when you are using the AI for healthcare services. Okay. But our today's topic is not this. Our today's topic is this. Ethical guidelines for application of artificial intelligence in biomedical research and healthcare. So we are talking about research. How we can use the AI in research. How we should use the artificial intelligence ethically for the biomedical and healthcare research. Understand, so these two guidelines, both the guidelines made, uh, you know, was developed in 2023. I mean, the last year only, both the guidelines, those guidelines also, these guidelines also. But today, as per the, you know, our uh, course demand, we are going to cover these guidelines. We are covering these ethical guidelines for application of artificial intelligence in biomedical research and healthcare, okay? so. Uh, here you will see a lot of things. I'm I'll, I'll uh, going to see you these. Uh, sorry, I think I closed it. So I'm going to see you uh, these guidelines. Okay, don't worry. Uh, let me share the screen now uh, with the PPTs. So one second. One second. Yeah. So let me share the screen and then we can. Yes. Okay. Yes. So here are the guidelines. That is the class. Just confirm if it is full screen and visible to all of you guys. If it is full screen and visible to all of you, can someone confirm guys, please someone confirm it for me. Yes. Okay. Visible. Perfectly fine. So today we are going to talk about <clears throat> ethical guidelines for application of artificial intelligence in biomedical and healthcare research uh, 2023, right? So can someone just tell me one thing, guys, before we go to the next slides, before we go to the next slides, I don't have the, uh, you know, question today uh, from the guidelines because, uh, 
you know, I believe that, you know, many of you have not read, but still I'll ask you this question. This is not on the screen today, but let me ask you this question. How many of you have read these guidelines? How many of you have read these guidelines? Yes. Just read these guidelines. How many of you have read these guidelines? Tell me, guys. No. Okay. 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 Fine. Fine. Can someone just tell me another question? Define AI. How do you define AI in your language, guys? Tell me. You all have to tell me. Define AI in your language. Yes, guys. Define AI in your language. What do you understand by AI, artificial intelligence? Please tell me. Yes. Yes, guys. Yes, define AI, guys. Come on, fast. We don't have all the time. Computer-based intelligence. What does it mean? Computer-based intelligence. What does it mean? Yes. Computer-based intelligence means what? Yes, guys. Artificial intelligence, a technology that uses algorithms to give results. A complex series of codes and algorithms capable of learning from existing data. It uses input data to generate new result. It is used to give the multiple results according to our entered data. Allow machine to match the capabilities of human mind. Make machines think like human in the smarter way. See. You all are correct. You all are correct. But you are not telling me the definition of AI. You are telling me the use and capabilities of AI. Okay. You are telling me the use, uses, application and capabilities of AI. <clears throat> okay. So AI is nothing. Frankly, I mean, many of your answers are uh, quite similar, but these are going towards the applications of AI. But the AI is nothing but just a tool. Okay. Tool that makes, you know, tougher solutions easier. Tougher solutions easier. If you read the definition of AI, it's very, very simple. It makes the tougher solutions easier with the help of, with the help of technology, with the help of technology. And that technology is vast. That can be, that can be hardware, that can be software, that can be algorithms, that can be coding, that can be multiple things. Okay. So yeah, definitely you are telling the scope, you are telling the mechanism, you are telling the applications. But if I'm asking you, like, what is AI exactly? Don't, I mean, yeah, these all are very much relevant to the AI, whatever you are telling me. But just define simply. It is a tool, nothing else. AI is just a tool, right? Which is making the life easier, which is making the solutions easier, not the problems. Understand, differentiate that in your mind. AI is not making the problems easier. AI is making the solutions easier okay so we need a lot of things to know about ai and a lot of applications to uh, know like where we can apply and what are the scope of ai we have to understand in these guidelines through these guidelines okay so these guidelines are prepared by dhr icmr can someone tell me what is dhr department of department of yes guys dhr is department of Yes, anyone? I'll write here for you. Okay. Department of. Yes, 
Yes, Department of Healthcare Research or Health Research. Okay, Department of Health Research is DHR. And where the DHR comes under? DHR comes under ICMR. Or we can say that ICMR comes under Department of Health Research, Government of India. And exactly which ministry DHR comes under? Can someone tell me which ministry DHR comes under? Can someone tell me which ministry the DHR comes under? Yes. MHFW. What is this? Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. This is a very important general knowledge to know. Ministry of Health and Yeah. Family Welfare. Oh, I was right. Okay. Family Welfare, right? Family Welfare. Yeah. So, Health and Family Welfare. Now, let's talk about the scope. So, I think, yeah. So, it is applied. It is, a scope is not just like, you know, to the researchers. The researchers only must know the AI guidelines or researchers must use the ethical guidelines. No, not at all. AI is being developed somewhere else. See, AI is being developed, listen carefully, developed somewhere else, then it is being trained somewhere else, then it is being sold to someone else or used by someone else. Okay. So at these three stages, okay, on these three stages, there are multiple stakeholders are associated. Okay. Multiple stakeholders are associated in the development, in the training, in the using. At the time of uses, there are multiple stakeholders are associated with artificial intelligence. And who are those uh, stakeholders? Innovators, the researchers or the creators. Okay. Innovators could be the researchers or creators both. Okay. Then developers, I mean the developers, technologists who made the hardware and software right and then the researchers who are using it health professionals who are using it then ethical committees who are monitoring it okay ethical committees are to monitor the misuse or unethical use of ai okay then institutions where the clinical trials are going on or the research is going on using the ai and then sponsors who are funding such studies than funding agencies like right so funding agencies involved in research related to artificial intelligence and biomedical research and healthcare right so it is very very important the scope is not just limited to the researcher but the scope is you know very vast and at every stage from the development to distribution and to uses everywhere there are multiple stakeholders in artificial intelligence okay so everyone has to follow every it is every uh you know it is applicable to all the stakeholders all the stakeholders not only one but all the stakeholders okay now let me talk about the applications of ai in healthcare that is the main crux here you have to understand that the applications of ai in healthcare okay if you understood this you will understand all the guidelines so in the slides i kept all the applications of ai in healthcare okay so can someone just tell me what are the applications of ai in healthcare research or healthcare yes guys tell me yes please tell me yes Yes, guys. Okay. Bioinformatics can show the possible ADR, health tips to the patient, personalized medicine, drug discovery. Absolutely. Drug discovery, diagnosis, personalized medicines, health tips to the patient can show the possible ADRs, bioinformatics, data analytics, 
lot of things can be done with the help of AI, okay, to maintain the patient data surgeries. Yeah, these are the, I mean, everywhere you, you do it, okay, everywhere you can use the AI, okay, everywhere you can use the, uh, you know, AI, okay, everywhere in the healthcare research or, you know, the healthcare you can use, right. So, let's understand one by one, there are, they have categorized, these guidelines have categorized these all type of, you know, uses of AI, applications of AI in healthcare with the explanations, with the explanation. See, the first thing here is diagnostics and screening. Okay, guys, diagnostics and screening. Can someone tell me how we can use the AI in diagnostics and screening? Yes. So let, let's make it interactive now, more interactive. How we can use AI in diagnostics and screening? Yes, guys. When I speak, you can speak also. Let me make you speak. Okay, you can speak also now. Yeah. So, diagnostics and screening. With the examples, with the fantastic examples, I'll tell you here. See, as per the National Academics of Science, Engineering and Medicine report, carefully, as per the National Academics of uh, academies of science, engineering, and medicine report the post mortem studies. Post mortem studies have shown that around 10% of the patient deaths can be attributed to diagnostic errors. Like these 10% of the deaths, 10% of the deaths were preventable. 10% of the deaths were preventable. 10% of the deaths were preventable. They also reported that the diagnostic errors accounts for around 6 to 17 percent of adverse event as per the review of medical records. Okay, 6 to 17 percent of the adverse event, 17 percent of the adverse event. So, out of 100, 17 are getting the side effects, adverse events, right? So, just because of the diagnostic problems, just because of the diagnostic proper diagnostic problems. So, what we can do, how the AI can help. AI based technologies might help reduce the human errors in healthcare. They can reduce the human health uh, human errors in the healthcare and have the potential of enhancing the known methods of screening and diagnosis of disease. Improving the diagnostic accuracy, definitely. I mean, against manual, if you check, the diagnostic accuracy is fantastic with the machines. And it can be the guiding evidence based treatment algorithms. Okay, we can make, we can develop the evidence-based treatment algorithms, like evidence-based treatment algorithms, predicting outcomes, predicting outcomes, identifying health system gaps with an overall overall impact on the human health and wellness. Yeah, you are writing early, di early detection of disease. So early detection of disease definitely with the help of, I mean, they are calling here that screening, right? So the methods of screening is the main part of you know, like diagnostics, yes, it will help in the early detection of the problems. It will help the, in the prognosis. It will help in the survival. It will help in the accuracy of diagnostics. It will help in the, you know, finding the correct biomarkers. So, it the AI can help the data and AI can help, you know, uh, summarizing your reports. AI can help in all type of diagnostic and screening things. Okay. And in the research, it can be one of the best tool to summarize the big data. Okay, it can be one of the best, uh, you know, tool to summarize the big data in sort forms. Okay, big data in the sort forms, right? Big data in the sort forms. Then the second thing is therapeutic drug discovery and development. Therapeutics, drug discovery and development. So AI technology such as machine learning is being used in the field of drug discovery and epitome identification for the vaccine development and had the potential to accelerate the process and make it more cost effective definitely because we are uh, we are not involving the human beings and there are some processes which can be faster than the manual part okay precision medicines as the word suggests explore the possibility of delivering the personalized treatments based upon individuals unique characteristics such as age gender race family history and genomic variation. So nowadays, you know, you must be heard of, you must be heard of the genetic modulation. Okay. Gene changing. We can, in the layman language, we can say gene transcription 
और जीन ट्रांसक्रिप्ट ऑल्ट्रेशन ओके जीन ट्रांसक्रिप्ट ऑल्ट्रेशन ओके सो जीन व्हाट इज जीन ऑल्ट्रेशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए आई विद हेल्प ऑफ कंप्यूटर विद द हेल्प ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी विद द हेल्प ऑफ टूल्स यू नो वी कैन इवन ऑल्टर द जीन्स राइट वी कैन ऑल्टर अवर आई मीन सी we have that alteration in the dna and mrna since before but now with the help of ai with the help of precision medicine we can check and we can change the gene transcripts also in the human beings and that will help the upcoming generations okay how it will help the upcoming generations see suppose the person has a specific disease gene related disease okay a specific gene related disease my connection was off i don't know how suddenly the connection went off okay let me say it okay yeah so we were talking about therapeutics and drug discovery development so the precision medicine is something which makes the you know treatment personalized you must have heard of a lot of new innovations in the you know genetics with the help of ai and with the help of you know evidence based medicine the personalized medicine how it helps is it can alter the gene transcription it can alter the gene transcription it can remove the defected genes or the gene which is carrying the disease or which can which is carrying the problem to the next generation they can they can remove it okay they can remove it and nowadays there are multiple other things that gene preservation if you have heard of gene preservation so gene preservation is done after gene alteration okay so that those things can be done easily with the help of ai and that will help in the that will help in the therapeutics and even in the drug development and drug discovery there is the huge you know impact of artificial intelligence because artificial uh, you know intelligence gets you know gets the entire process first of all the faster and it helps in the different different stages of the clinical trial from the basics from the you know identification of the tool identification of the you know drug entity identification of the chemical entity you must have heard of the schrodinger right you must have heard of the schrodinger so schrodinger is the software which helps us you know discovering the new drugs okay and with the help of ai the latest versions of schrodinger and there are other softwares those softwares helps us discovering the new drug entities new drug uh, you know uh, chemical entities and those we can develop in the laboratories we can do the animal studies we can do the human studies in multiple you know phases and those phases can be completely operated by the ai and those phases can be completely monitored by ai and data can be uh, you know analyzed by the ai to get the precise outcome and the great outcome right so it can help in multiple ways now the third thing is clinical care okay third thing is clinical care if you check about the clinical care okay so clinical care how means like uh, till now we were talking about the diagnostic screening we are talking about you know the drug discovery therapeutics and all but how it helps in the clinical care this is very simple examples are very very simple examples are telemedicine okay ai chatbots so these chatbots are made like you have the wearables you have the you know apple watch you have the you know running bolt watch and multiple things are there right you have the belts you have the uh, you know uh, ai boards which can help you in knowing everything okay everything related to the medical education disease education counseling and telemedicine can connect the person to the doctor without you know going to the doctor without the physical visit right so these things are made possible with the help of ai only with the help of ai only so clinical care like healthcare demand is rising and countries are facing a shortage of skilled workforce workforce so advances in ai has opened up new opportunities to tackle this shortage like telemedicine and self care via interactive chatbots interactive chatbots digital monitoring devices like wearables watches is one of the area which has shown the significant development in the recent years if you have heard of there are the fall alarms right there are the fall alarms in apple watches right in apple watches so the person if the person is going to fall or if he falls that apple watch will automatically send the message to the close persons whoever number is saved in the uh, you know phone as a close one like the son daughter parents or anyone it can send the alarms immediately to the person so 
the you know help can be given help can be provided and the medical attention can be provided to person immediately okay so these things are being done just with the help of ai just with the help of ai in the healthcare and you have seen that your heartbeat your uh, you know uh, atrial blood gases nowadays atrial blood gases potassium everything is ecg everything is being checked by the variables like the watches and all which is watches are there you know you must have seen the digital watches and uh, uh, you know the there are the, not only the watches there are uh, something called as bands okay nowadays there are the bands very thin bands right not the watches but thin bands which measure your entire day's exercise activities and uh, uh, you know the health st status right so those things are very very important for the clinical care and that can collect the data and send to the doctor so doctor can get the estimate like okay what kind of things are going in with the going on with the patient so they can you know uh, they can customize the treatment they can customize the counseling they can customize the uh, you know their conversations with the patient according to the data which is provided by the ai uh, ai chatbots or ai bands or you know the variables and all right so the example here is natural language processing like the uh, NLP is being utilized to analyze the unstructured data like physician clinical notes to facilitate the clinical decision making. So NLP is helping just by reading the notes of the doctor and it is helping the helping in the clinical decision making. It is helping in the clinical decision making, right? Clinical decision making means like what drug to be given, what drug, uh, you know, to be prescribed now for how many days, how much dose it is needed. So those things can be done easily with the help of AI using the natural language processing NLP. Okay. Then there are, uh, you can see the another examples like Google DeepMind and IBM Watson Analytics have developed the AI power tool. Okay. They have developed the AI power tool including mobile-based medical assistant, diagnostics, clinical decision-making tools, and prognostic prediction tools for improving overall patient outcomes, overall patient care, right? So there are a lot of, uh, you know, things, a lot of areas where you can use the AI and where AI is applicable in the clinical care. Then epidemiology and prevention of the disease. You must have seen one example I'll give you. Many countries, okay, many countries, when the corona came, they automated the system. Okay. They automated the system of tracking the patients. They automated the system of, you know, uh, enrolling the patient and, you know, collecting their data, reporting their data and, you know, uh, counting the numbers of the, you know, uh, epidemiology, the prevalence and incidences of corona cases. So in the corona cases, we used AI a lot. AI was used a lot in the corona timing. Every, almost all the countries used, you know, AI because it was not possible with the human resources. Okay, remember this, it was not possible with the human resources because everyone was getting affected. So they used, like everyone has used the AI to calculate and to check the epidemiology and to, you know, calculate the numbers, calculate the, uh, you know, what kind of resources are being used, everything, you know. So see here, the, during the initial times of COVID-19 pandemic, many countries used AI-based methods for early detection, tracing of the contacts to monitor the spread of the disease in the corona. Okay, so it is being used and, you know, it's a very useful tool for the epidemiology and prevention of diseases. Okay, so conventional methods of data collection involve one or two sources only, but with AI methods, it has the potential to integrate data from several sources like surveillance, administrative, hospital data, registries, general practice clinicals to provide the meaningful evidences. So it's now it's not necessary that you get the data, one data and analyze one data, but AI can help you detect the similar data from the different sources, like maybe one from the Uppsala Monitoring Center, one from the, uh, you know, uh, government of India, some one from the, you know, big hospitals like AIMS and all, then the research and then some private general practitioner. So that will combine and make an evidence, you know, make an evidence about, make an evidence about the, uh, you know, the decision makings about the, uh, you know, the prevalence and about the epidemiology of the things in the public health. So it is, and it, it can help in big data analysis with the help of AI. Okay. So it is helpful. It is very helpful in such domains of epidemiology and prevention of the disease also. So these are the part 
where we can use AI in the research. I'm not telling about that you have to use, I mean, do when uh, AI use in healthcare. I'm not just telling AI use in healthcare. I'm telling about AI use in healthcare research. Okay, so you can see here, first, like your, sorry, diagnostics and screening, therapeutic and discovery related research, clinical care, critical care and clinical care research. And then, you know, your uh, epidemiology and prevention of the disease. And the fifth is behavioral and mental health care. Behavioral and mental health care. So I'll give you an example here. You know, I'll give you an example here. So when someone is in the mental, uh, you know, uh, mental health uh, status, so they are not opened up to everyone. Right. When somebody is there, somebody has the behavioral changes, somebody has the mental health, uh, you know, problems. So they usually and easily, they don't talk to anyone. Okay. Or they don't, they don't talk to everyone. They don't open up with every, you know, with everyone. Right. So in such cases, there are multiple studies, guys. There are multiple studies which suggest that AI chatbots could be a neutral talker, could be a neutral, uh, you know, therapist for the people with behavioral and mental health issues. Okay, AI chatbots can be the opportunity to talk, opportunity to, you know, uh, break that ice, right? So that those person can talk with the AI chatbots, like right? not the physical therapist, because they are not having that sinus, they are not having that insecurity of talking to a live person, right? So that's how the AI can help in the behavioral and mental health care. And that is the matter of research. This is a big matter of research, like how we can improve the outcomes in such stages. Okay, how we can improve uh, the talkings, conversations for different, different diseases, like, you know, different, different psychiatric diseases, different, different behavioral problems, like ADHD and all. How we can, you know, enhance the power of AI, how we can enhance the, uh, you know, use of uh, AI in different domains of mental health. Right. So this is very, very important for the for such researches. Right. So medical AI models, medical AI models provide significant possibilities in behavioral and mental health treatment. Medical AI may improve psychology and psychiatric procedures in a variety of ways, including assisting patients in receiving a diagnosis, actively managing their symptoms between in, in person, consult, uh, you know, in person consults, predicting and preventing the probable flare ups and more. Chatbots are one of the potential use of AI in mental health. That is telling. While mental disorders continue to carry significant social stigma and many people struggle to express their thoughts and feelings in the feelings directly, mental health chatbots provide an opportunity for individuals who are inhibited to seek direct professional psychological and psychiatric help to take their first step towards self-care. Self so can you understand how AI you know, is developed, how AI is, uh, you know, helping people with the mental health and behavioral health, right? So there are a lot of chances, a lot of things, you know, have, uh, you must have seen of, uh, or you must have heard of, how many of you have heard of the Nidra app? Can someone tell me, did you hear of Nidra app? Nidra app. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me write it. Nidra app. Nidra app. This is the app name. Nidra app. How many of you have heard of Nidra app? This is a very famous app. You know, very, very famous app. Indian application used in almost 100 countries. Okay, almost 100 countries. Sleep application. Yeah, this is the sleep app. This is the Nidra name is Nidra app. This is, this is just, you know, helping people. This is just helping people in sleep. Okay. It is customizing the music, natural voices like rain, uh, sounds of the sea waves and, you know, there are multiple things. The low music, instrumental music and uh, traditional music, any kind of things. They have just customized the different themes for the different persons, okay, based on the person's aura, such e such applications are doing a wonderful job. Literally, I'm telling you why, because you have to put your mood, you have to put your aura, you have to put about you in the chatbot in the form, and they will suggest the accurate music, accurate therapy 
about the things, about the things which can help your mind sleep, which can help your mind calm and sleep. Understand? So, these AI chatbots are very helpful in the behavioral and mental health care. Okay? Then, applications of AI in healthcare, like there are two things. Uh, you know, I mean, we have talked about a lot, but how we use the AI not only in the direct patient care, but indirectly in the patient care. So there is something called as health management system using the AI. HMS you all have heard, right? HMS you all have heard, right? Every hospital uses the hospital management system and that hospital management system take care of the entire hospital, right? So AI can be used here for what? AI can be used here for the scheduling of the appointments, admissions, Electri uh, you know, electronic medical records, accounting, billing, claim, settling down, and then there are repetitive tasks and high level of security also, or high level of scrutiny is needed. So AI can help in everything here also in the healthcare management, right? But you will tell that this is not about the research. This is the matter of research. This is the matter of improvement every day, how we can make it faster, how we can make it better, how we can make it, uh, you know, very easy to the person who is using it. We can, how we can make it easy to the person, to the user. Okay. That is the healthcare management system using AI, right? So there are two domains. One is clinical management system. SCMS. One is hospital management system. Can someone tell me a little difference about clinical management system and hospital management system? Yes, guys. Clinical management system and hospital management system. Tell me. Yes. Tell me what is clinical management system and what is, yeah. Yes, guys, tell me. Okay, let me tell you. So, clinical management system is a part of hospital management system only, okay? Clinical management system is a part of hospital management system only. So, hospital management means taking care of the bills, taking care of the appointments, taking care of clinical management system okay and taking care of uh, you know the insurances taking care of the resources taking care of the uh, you know oxygen supply taking care of the beds utilization taking care of a lot of things you know other resources utilization everything is being done with the healthcare but in that there is a part called clinical management system okay this is a part of hospital management system only so clinical management system means it will take care of your prescriptions it will take care of your lab reports. It will take care of your appointments again. And it will take care of your follow-ups. It will take care of the telemedicine. It will take care of the consultations. Okay. So there are certain, certain distinguished things. This everything what I'm telling now is also a part of health management system only. Right. But clinical management system is like uh, having its own domain. Okay. Its own domain under this. And it is talking about patient-related data. Patient-related data means blood is collected, which tests are being done, what is the report, right? What is the report, how to collect the report, how to print the report, and then, you know, associating with the diagnosis and, uh, you know, helping writing the notes, writing the prescriptions online, uh, you know, in the, in the internet, in the computers. Nowadays, it is not allowed to write by the hand anywhere in the, you know, in the or in our, our hospital, it is completely, you know, banned now. <clears throat> there are no handwritten prescriptions at all. There are no handwritten prescriptions at all in our hospital right now, right? So in most of the big hospitals, even in the AIMS and all, everything is being typed and written digitally, okay? And printed digitally. So that is the, that is happening by AI, by using the AI in healthcare research and healthcare applications. So everywhere, wherever we are talking about needs and <clears throat> research, okay? So have, these things can even help you in making your career, right? Let's uh, uh, leave the guidelines for a second. These are the applications of AI in your career also. Like it will help you where you want to go with the help of AI in life in the healthcare or healthcare research. If you want to go for the clinical care, if you want to go for the epidemiological public health, if you want to go for the big data analytics, if you want to go for the diagnostics, if you want to go for the drug development, everywhere AI is needed. Everywhere AI is needed. Okay. Now I'll tell you when you will complete your career, when you are 
going to complete your sorry educations and you are thinking about the career right whenever you are doing it whenever you are doing it you you know need the ai in every domain whether you go to the medical writing whether you go to the pharmacovigilance whether you go to the regulatory affairs whether you go to the medical advisory whether you go to the medical license whether you go to the cdm everywhere there is a role of ai okay now we'll come to the major part of the guidelines that is called as responsible ai okay responsible ai so what is responsible ai responsible ai means the inclusiveness fairness security transparency so these four are the core elements of widely asserted responsible ai framework inclusiveness fair secure and transparency transparency of outcomes inclusiveness of all the resources inclusiveness means it is not just like you are involving government reports only you are telling the data based on the government reports you are telling the results based on the publications you are telling the results because of the just because of the researches no inclusiveness means you are involving all the resources you are involving all the resources based on that you are coming to the outcome based on those analysis you are coming to the outcomes right fairness means there see fairness is a very fantastic word here you will be telling no bias right you will be telling no bias exactly fairness means no bias now you will tell how ai will be biased can someone just tell me this is a fantastic topic to discuss let me discuss this with you can someone tell me how ai can be unfair how ai can be biased can someone tell me this how ai can be biased yes guys tell me how ai can be biased or how ai can be unfair yes Give me the examples, give me the scenarios and all. Yes. It replaces the human resources in case the data is not updated. Like when the computer came, many people's work are replaced. When wrong information provided, wrong information provided means what, Sarah? Your sentence is correct. Your, I mean, your perception is correct, but it is having two meanings here. Okay. Can you tell me what does it mean by when the wrong information provided? Because of the wrong data. Hmm. Because AI is trained by human data and any type of discrimination or bias is done by these people reflects in AI data and hence it results. Okay. Perfectly fine. Lajja Desai. Yes. If data used to train AI lacks diversity, it may be biased. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is the point of fairness here. See, if we are like, suppose we are involving the AI for the clinical trial recruitment or randomization purpose, just giving the example, if we are using the AI for the recruitment purpose and the recruiter who is developing the AI, the technologist with the help of the recruiter says, I don't want to include the race Africans or I don't want to include the race South Asians except South Asians include all the races in the clinical trial. So that is a direct selection bias. Okay. So AI also cannot help, but AI will be doing the bias and unfairness intentionally. Right. So always think AI is human made. AI is human made, not the humans are made by AI. Okay. AI is the part of human brain. <clears throat> Understand, human brains are not the part of AI. So, AI will do whatever the humans will feed into it. Understand? So, that's how, you know, it shows. So, yeah, like so recent Gemini issue of showing only dark people also uh, for all prompts. Yeah, that was the one issue recently happened. Uh, you know, the big issue happened, definitely. And there are a lot of, lot of, lot of things, you know, uh, so the unfairness is very common in AI. The biases are very common in AI. So responsible fair, responsible AI must be including all type of resources in training, including all type of peoples, all type of communities, societies, everyone. It should be secure. Secure means what? Secure means it should keep the data, <coughs> data and information related to the human beings secure. It should be the transparent about the 
results about the outcomes okay secure responsible and ethical ai deplo uh, deployment uh, necessities a collaborative multidisciplinary and informed approach okay so the secure and responsible if we are talking about the secure and responsible ai we need a collaborative multidisciplinary informed approach what is multidisciplinary as i told you in the initial stage in the first slide okay in the first slide there are multiple stakeholders right there are multiple stakeholders right and those stakeholders play a very important role okay those those people are not just the developers and all right let me tell you in a brief way let me tell you in a brief way little brief way see first of all the developers okay developers so developers are also two type one is ideation the idea person the person who came with the idea and then the technologist who you know brought this idea to surface then there are the regulations regulators regulators involved okay then the distribution okay distribution means where to use how to use i mean like uh, whom to sell whom not to sell so see when there are the developers there are the commercial developers they don't look at the people who is buying it for what purpose they are buying it okay this is very very important to understand why they are buying the ai why they are buying the ai tools it is very important so regulators must focus on the distribution of ai and the uses of ai <clears throat> by the people and their purposes okay that is very important and then ultimately the user like who is using the ai so these people could be researchers businessmen you know the doctors uh, ca lawyers i mean anyone can use the you know different different domains there are there could be you know 1000 1 million uh, uses of ai in different different domains so this is totally about you if you want to have the responsible ai everyone has to be responsible and ethical everyone every one of these stakeholders have to be very very ethical and responsible for that so there are some important ethical principles principles means the guidelines okay so these this is the major uh, you know part if i say of the guidelines ethical principles of ai in healthcare there are there are these 10 you know uh, principles of ai okay like this starts with you know accountability liability so if you leak it like when is trustworthiness data security and trustworthy data validation how it was validated non discriminatory and fairness we just talked about optimization so we just you know try and test the ai models maybe 1000 times or 10000 times until we get the significance until we get the significance up to at least 90% 95% or 100% okay so whenever you are checking the ai models you know there are the testings so maybe like in the first time it is just showing the 15% validity 15% efficacy uh, sorry 15% you know uh, the significance okay but later it will be increasing when you are running it again and again with more precise data with more uh you know uh, correct data with more realistic data then it will increase so the optimization of the software optimization of the algorithm is very very important and the data quality check at different stages then accessibility to everyone risk minimization and safety collaborations autonomy data privacy accountability will read one by one in the guidelines okay we'll read one by one in the guidelines these things are very very important so i'll tell you some things there okay let me share the guidelines with you uh, here yeah so here are the guidelines and see if you check those guidelines these guidelines okay yeah okay yeah so if you check these are made by our dhr right if someone's mic is on guys please put off your mic turn off your mics turn off your mics guys okay yeah so this is made by icmr and uh, the dhr here if you check these are made by the dhr here dhr icmr artificial intelligence cell 
has prepared it, which was led by Rao Ji, I think. Yeah. So this is the content table of content. Here they are talking about applications of AI in healthcare, <coughs> diagnostics and screening, therapeutic drug discovery and development, critical care, epidemiology and prevention of the disease, behavioral and mental health. I have covered all these. Healthcare management system using AI. So uh, one is CMS and one is HMS. Okay. Then ethical principles of AI in healthcare, right? And then guideline, uh, you know, guiding the principles for stakeholders involving in development and validation and deployment. Then ethical review processor is very important in medical AI. Inform consent process for AI research and using AI. Governance of AI technology using the healthcare and research. Ethical checklist for AI for biomedical research and healthcare. We'll be seeing that. So first, first they are talking about talking about the preambles and all the thing. Then the applications of AI, diagnostics and screening. We have talked about therapeutics and drug discovery and development. Critical care, epidemiology and prevention of disease, behavioral and mental health. Okay. Then healthcare management systems using AI. First is medical AI software for clinical management systems, which talks about all the clinical part. And then medical AI software hospital management system, which talks about everything, including those clinical parts. Okay. So here is the ethical principle for AI in healthcare. You will see the responsible AI and you will see this picture. Okay, this picture talks about all the principles. So first principle is, you know, uh, here. First principle is autonomy. Okay, what is autonomy? What is autonomy? So when AI technologies are used in healthcare, there is a possibility that the system can function independently and undermine human autonomy. Okay, so the application of AI technology into healthcare may transfer the responsibilities to decision making into the hands of machine, you know. So we should never, never, ever compromise. We should never, ever compromise. One sec. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, guys. I'm saying again. I'm speaking again. Yeah, here. So that autonomy means, I was talking about autonomy. Autonomy means, see, machines don't know who is the boss. Okay. Who has created them? They don't know about that. They don't know about the responsibilities. Okay. They don't know about the responsibilities. They don't know about the limitations and restrictions. Okay. So once you give the 100% decision making powers in the hand of machine to the machines, they can override the human decisions. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. Suppose, suppose the MRI machines or CT scan machines. I'm not going to the far robotics and all, right? MRI machines and uh, CT scan machines, if you are just giving them uh, supposed data of the million patients, feeding those with the million, uh, one million patients data and telling them to make the decisions over all type of cancers. So they can, you know, screen the patient and they can detect the cancer. They can tell which cancer is there, what's the grade and where is the cancer located. Three things, just three things, right? Which cancer, where is the cancer located, location and the, you know, severity of the cancer, staging of the cancer. If it can tell this, you have, you know, uh, you have fed the machine AI learning. I mean, the machine learnings, uh, you know, the machines with 1 million patients data is still, you know, is still, you cannot believe the machines. The machines will give the answers, which is available, you know, through those 1 million pictures only, right? Through the data of 1 million people only. But the world is not just 1 million, it is 8 billion, right? World is 8 billion and every patient, every person has different physiology. Every person has different physiology. So this autonomy can be taken anytime by the machines. So we should be very, very careful. For that, there is a term called human in the loop is very important. Okay, so whenever the machines are being, uh, you know, used with the AI to make the decisions in the clinical or the research, you know, there must be a human intervention. There must be the human intervention. So, you know, that will give us the data and that will not give us the, you know, what we say, the FOMO of, uh, you know, autonomy, right? So, and then the safety and risk minimization is the another principle. So safety and risk minimization is very, very important. So 
protection of dignity rights safety and well being of the patient participant must have the highest priority so you know in the uh, like the computers data entry softwares using the patient's data you know we have to train them we have to train our ai we have to train our forms we have to train our websites we have to train the ai like when the patient when someone else the data is going for the analysis or data is going to someone else what the things which would be masked the name will not be go or uh, you know will not be going for that or the you know the address will not be going to that okay so now there are few things which can be masked or which will not be sent to the third party that will be at the our end so the safety and risk minimization is very very important right so a robust set of control mechanism is necessary to prevent the unintended or deliberate misuse the permanent and essential requirement is to have the secure system and software because of the sensitive nature of data is very you know should be very very careful so there are you know the ethical committee and other stakeholders must ensure that there is a favorable benefit risk assessment the benefit should overweigh the risk involved right risk involved means things risk involved of the safety and well being <coughs> correct guys so the there are the all the guidelines then the trustworthiness okay trustworthiness is what this is very interesting uh, uh you know the subtopic very interesting and i was reading about the trustworthiness you will see what are the things they have involved in trustworthiness? Trustworthiness is the most desirable quality of any diagnostic or prognostic tool Okay, to be used in healthcare uh, with the AI. So clinicians need to build the confidence in the tool. I was just giving the example of this, right? So when we talk about, when I was talking about the MRI machines or CT scan machines and their trustworthiness, we should have a, we should build we should build a very wonderful trust and the confidence on the AI machines and that is not possible. There are the chances of error every time. So human intervention or human overlook, okay, we call the term overlook. Human intervention or human overlook is very important. Guys, human overlook is very, very important in AI studies or in AI related, uh, you know, clinical research or wherever we are using the AI in such, uh, you know, uh, parts. Okay. So there are few terms in addition to providing the accurate analysis of health data, a trustworthy AI should be also lawful. Okay. So it is not just that the AI is trustworthy, but it should be lawful. It must adhere all the applicable laws and regulations. Okay. That means the trustworthiness does not mean that it is trustworthy and doing the illegal analysis, taking the illegal path to get your trust or you know you are taking the illegal path to develop such a uh, you know software or such uh, you know applications which can take the answer from anywhere which are not even sometimes illegal which are not sometimes legal so whenever you are making the trust it should be lawful it should be ethical which is ensuring the ethical principles and values of the community and then it should be reliable and valid okay for both from the both sides like technical and social perspective okay then <clears throat> there are other things explainable it should be explain explainable and uh, it should be transparent right so sufficient information must be published and then uh, you know, conflict of interest must be you know tackled in such cases then data privacy you know what is data privacy right they have the multiple uh, you know clauses for the data privacy accountability and liability so accountability and liability is another you know important term of these guidelines and which should be you know uh, covered why it is because see we cannot blame any algorithm if it does a mistake right is it can we can we blame any algorithm for the you know uh, unfair by or unfair and biased selection of the patient can we blame the machine? Can we blame the AI? Can we blame the AI for giving the wrong drug or assigning the wrong drug to the person? Can we blame the AI to, you know, like assigning the wrong drug to the person and the person is dead or person got the permanent disability? Is it possible? Not at all. Yeah, definitely. We cannot, we, AI cannot held responsible, right? Definitely AI cannot, right? So, there must be the accountability and liability. The first thing is accountability. There must be the person, there must be someone who is innovator or developer or technologist who must be 
accountable and responsible for the AI actions. Okay, these people must be, so accountability must be there for these things. So innovators in the field of AI may be, you know, unfamiliar with the medical ethics, research regulations and regulatory guidelines applications. So it is very, very important to have the representative from the health sectors. Okay, and then there is a concept of human in leap. So human in loop. So everywhere there should be the human. You cannot, you cannot, you know, hold the AI responsible for anything, right? So these are the things which are very important to read, very important to study. Optimization of the quality data. You can read these things. Accessibility, equity, accessibility, equity, and inclu inclusiveness. I was talking about the inclusiveness before also. So inclusiveness means it should include all type of data. Here, it is not about all type of population. Here, when we are using the AI, when we are using the term AI, and when we are talking about the inclusiveness, inclusiveness means AI must be trained with all type of data. All type of data means whether that is the government reports, news, or uh, maybe, you know, the unpublished data or the, you know, the results from the library di uh, laboratory directly, or, you know, that is a piece of opinion, or maybe the research publication. I mean, all type of gray data, white published data, white papers, all type of reports, government report, everything must be included in training of the data. So we get the fair outcome, though we get the fair outcome. So it should be accessible to, uh, and then accessibility of this AI must be there for all the countries and all type of all communities and all the people. Right. Collaboration. Definitely collaboration is very important because developing the AI is not, uh, you know, a simple thing. So you need the very, very important team from the technology side, from the healthcare side and from the, uh, the large collection of data is also very important. So how to collect the data from the hospitals, from the people, from the, uh, you know, research centers. So it is very, very important to have the meaningful collaborations. Okay. Then non-discrimination and fair, fair, uh, you know, fairness, uh, uh, principles so definitely that we have talked about already it should not be discriminatory so the training algorithm must be accurate and representative of the population all the populations we have discussed that right so there should be no discrimination and there should be the fairness then validity validity again is a very important uh you know uh, factor and principle and there are the separate guidelines for the validity so ai technology in the healthcare must undergo the rigorous clinical and field validation before application on patients or participant. There are necessary to ensure the safety, safety and efficacy. The divergence of AI-based algorithm may be amplified due to difference in databases used to training of the AI algorithm. So validation is very important. Once the AI, uh, you know, suppose I'm uh, developing the, <clears throat> the developing the AI system to screen the lung cancer. Okay, to screen the lung cancer. So I'm just doing it in the technology. Okay, I'm just doing with the help of technology. I'm developing the algorithms. I'm developing the machine learning, maybe with the help of, you know, thousands of the images of lung cancer, thousands of the images of, you know, uh, different stages. So the validity cannot be done by using such things. Okay, validity will be done when the application is being used for the real time population. Okay, when the application is being used for the real time population, that time the validation will be happening. Then there are guiding the principles for stakeholders involved in development, validation and deployment. So there are the people, as I told you, there are the stakeholders, academicians, academics, researchers, industry sponsors, clinic, clinicians, hospitals, public health, public patient community, ethics committees, government regulations. So they have the guidelines for everyone. Like at the development phase, as I told you, there is a development phase, then there's a distribution phase, and then there is a user phase. Okay, so they have the guidelines for everything. Guidelines for validation phase, right? So there are the specific guidelines, okay, for the clinical and other health-related uh, deployments of AI. Okay, very, very important. Then ethical review process. So I'll tell you, I'll show you something very important here. See, the ethical issues related to reviewing a protocol. How? Essentiality of a study, essentiality and appropriateness of the system. A special issues when we are, when the ethical committee is reviewing, when the ethical committee is reviewing 
the protocol of AI related subjects or AI related research, then it is very important to know the essentiality of the study along with the appropriateness of the system, okay, which has been developed or which has been, which are being used. Disclosure or declaration of the potential conflict of interest here alternates available and opportunities and cost comparison must be there along with that. So, and in the normal studies, routine studies, routine issues, scientific design and conduct of the study, here qualification of the researchers and developers is important. The benefit risk ratio, <clears throat> This side, it is training of the data collection procedures. What was that? Quality check. Recruitment of the research participants. Selection of the tra training and testing. You know, selection of the training and testing population. Informed consent process. Here, possibly, technological malfunctions, glitches, failures, and the readdressal mechanisms and stakeholders' responsibility and accountability is the, like, one of the aspect in that. Payment of the participation. Adequacy assessment of the study sites. So, they have given, they have differentiated it very, very well. Then what kind of informed consent process must be taken? So, you know, informed consent uh, process has very, very, you know, not uh, very different, but there are certain things which must be, you know, uh, are taken care for AI studies. I, I think you missed that. Okay, so here it is. So the researchers must take, must make sure the research participants understand the alternatives available, including the traditional methods for AI technology in question, including doing nothing. Also, the comparable benefits and risk involved should be discussed. Okay, so the researchers read this, guys. This is very important. Read the researchers must ensure that the patient or the research subject has understood the process and must evaluate the research subject by teach back or show me method. Some people are like teach me. Some people are like just show me, right? So there are multiple evaluation techniques and those techniques must be completely processed in case of the informed consent okay then researchers or end user of the product should be end user of the product should be able to distinguish between the role of human caregivers and technology right so human intervention is very important as i always tell and caregiver has the different emotions with the person instead of the like you know uh instead of using the ai like the telemedicine or, uh, you know, the, there are the alarms for the medicines and all, right? So, and then uh, IC approvals, then the governance, they talked about the government. They talked about the National Digital Health Blueprint 2019, right? And that they told about the ethical use of AI in uh, normal uh, uses, right? So here are the ethical checklist, sorry, ethics checklist for AI for biomedical research and healthcare. So objectives, technology, funding, conflict of interest, credentials, types of participants. So when you are developing the protocol or developing the, you know, uh, going to the ethics committee, you must, you know, you must keep these things in mind. You must have these things in the protocol at least. Okay, the credentials, types of participant, participation recruit, recruitment methods, then risk involved and management strategy, treatment of research related injuries, potential benefits of AI tool, evidences, accountability, validation, monitoring, and then data collection stories, and then informed consent, then right to be forgotten, moderation, if it's anything like loop, right? So these are the things which must be, you know, uh, taken care into the consideration and uh, taken into the consideration when we are using such things. And here again, you will see the glossary. What is algorithm? What is artificial intelligence? So see, Artificial intelligence is just the tool, especially the computer system. The process includes the learning, reasoning, and self-corrections. Black, what is black box? What is data anonymization? What is, you know, informed refusal? So there are the things and the people involved as well, right? So that's all about the AI guidelines for the ethics and, uh, you know, ethical use in biomedical research and the healthcare research. Okay, guys. So that's all for this. You can ask me the questions now. <laughs> if not, please share the uh, feedback form with them. Please share the attendance form. Guys, by the time you can ask me the questions if you have any. Are you feeling it's boring, guys? Yes, guys, do you think it's boring? All these guidelines is 
Tell me, guys, if you feel these are bored. No? Okay, so here's the feedback form. Thursday. Thursday. Orientation will happen on Thursday. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. That information is very new for all of you. I understand. And all the guidelines is, are having almost, you know, similar outlines. All the guidelines have the similar outlines, but believe me, these all the guidelines are very specific, very, very specific. Okay. So, yeah, no longer accepting. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. I'll, I'll just check it. Just give me a second, guys. Give me a second. Give me a second, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Believe that AI is not a reliable source when it comes to the prescribing medicines and diagnosis. Then and then what would one do in this case? Like the diagnosis may vary depending on the several factors. Definitely. See, AI is not that much advanced right now. It may need a lot of trainings, lot of data. I mean, not only the millions, maybe the billions of the prescriptions, billions of the reports, billions of the uh, uh, you know uh, diagnostic images. Then it can help. Then it can be you know reliable. Right now we cannot rely on it because each and every disease has the similar symptoms. There are you know the uh, shortness of breath is the symptom for almost. 20 to 30 problems, okay, 20 to 30 cardiac problems, lung problems, uh, anemia, and a lot of things. So AI works on the terms, AI works on the keywords, AI works on the, you know, whatever data you are feeding the similar data. So the person, the doctor can see it physically and he can make the immediate decisions based on the visible characters of the patient, visible sign and symptoms. Okay, but AI will be just reading the sign and symptoms which has been given. So that could be different, different things. So that's why we cannot believe the AI. That why, that's why we cannot believe the, uh, you know, AI for the diagnosis and uh, this purpose is because right now AI is a child. Oh, okay, AI is not even a child. AI is just infant for such powerful decision makings. Okay, it will be trained and it will become, you know, uh, literally useful after maybe 10 years, literally, because AI must be trained a lot if it is being used for the prescription and uh, prescription writing and diagnosis purpose. It is needed to be trained with the billions of data. Okay. I believe that AI would work as human demand. So the person feeding the data can make required changes. Definitely, it is always their human intervention and developments according to the human needs is always there. Yes, guidelines I'll share in the groups. Okay. Yes, guys. So 